Tonight, SIX investigates FEMA, a federal agency that many Harvey survivors have come to know well and some would rather forget. Last week, we exposed them as a giant bureaucracy where survivors drown in paperwork while their needs go unmet. Well, now we dig into FEMA's wholesale rejection of calls for help in the coastal bend, and we expose the highly subjective process by which the poorest face almost insurmountable obstacles. Here's Chief Investigative Reporter Rick Sproul. Numbers and data rarely make for good stories, but in this case, the numbers are the story. That's because we've discovered that in the 30-day period after Hurricane Harvey, FEMA rejected your applications for assistance not by the hundreds or even the thousands, but by the tens of thousands. We know because we use federal freedom of information laws to get FEMA to release the information they normally would not. And here's what it shows. In Aransas, Nueces, and San Patricio counties, 72,000 individuals and households asked FEMA for help in the 30 days after Harvey made landfall. But FEMA rejected 31,000 of them. That's 43%. And though Harvey made landfall in Aransas, San Patricio, and Nueces counties, FEMA's most common reason for rejecting those applications was for something called insufficient damage. If it sounds subjective, it probably is. A lot of times it, it was damage related to the storm, but it was damage that didn't make their house unsafe or uninhabitable. In other words, if you lose some or all of your home to a hurricane, do not count on FEMA to bring it back. The FEMA assistance is no way, shape or form, nor has been designed to be that insurance that's going to get them back whole. It is really that seed money to get them started on the road to recovery. We asked Hannah's why the disconnect between the public's perception of what FEMA is here to do versus what they're actually doing. He says they're just not communicating well enough that the problem isn't them, it's us, or rather our lack of insurance coverage. We got to do a better job, not only at the federal level, the state level, the local level, but more importantly at the personal level of closing that insurance gap and, and having people understand what risk they are putting themselves at by not insuring themselves. For Amelia Adams of the Texas Low Income Housing Information Service in Austin, it's a calloused response. That's because for a lot of coastal families, finding affordable insurance is a real challenge. The fact that they don't have insurance uh, or have insurance at lower rates is not something that should surprise us. Since Harvey Adams and her colleagues have been pushing FEMA and the Texas General Land Office, which is FEMA's statewide partner in the recovery effort, for information and data about who is getting the most help. She says a lot of what she's seeing makes her uncomfortable with FEMA's assessments of its own performance, but more than that. And I'm especially not comfortable with the fact that FEMA has not been transparent about how they are allocating funding, how they're making determinations of who gets and who doesn't get funding. Adam says people like Rockport's Tabitha Castro probably fall into that category. Those are people whose homes, though priceless to themselves and their families. It was my home. That's what I had left from my husband. Are falling through the cracks in FEMA's confusing metric for determining value, a metric no one seems to fully understand, including Castro. As we've reported before, Castro is a widow on her own, raising four school-aged kids in Rockport. Money is tight, her home uninsured when Harvey tore it wide open. My front door wasn't even attached to the trailer. It was blown off? Yes. The bay windows were knocked out. That means that the rain and everything did get into my kitchen and on all my appliances. Despite these things, a FEMA inspector decided Castro's home had been mostly spared serious damage. The agency later offered her $1,400 to repair it. By then, though, it was gone, torn down when her landlord and a contractor deemed it uninhabitable. Castro, who now rents, says she'll try to follow FEMA's advice and get more insurance, but it isn't going to be easy. Starting over again has been the roughest thing ever. And are you going to be able to afford renter's insurance? I don't know yet. In any event, if what we found is any indication, Castro and those like her shouldn't expect much out of FEMA if ever there's another storm. Rick Sproul, Six Investigates. Next week, we continue our look at hurricane recovery, but the focus shifts from FEMA to the Texas Windstorm Insurance Association, or you might know it as TWIA.